Dowsing rods. Dowsing. Is it guesswork? Or is it something mysterious? Or is it actually just something that's extremely ordinary and everybody can do it? Well, today I want to explain why I think it's an extremely ordinary thing to do and why everybody can do it, but also why those of you that already started practicing it, why do you sometimes feel that you're just guessing? That's coming up. My name's Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. Welcome to the channel. This is where we look at the subjective nature of our experience of reality. We work with things like dowsing, meditation, mindfulness, all this sort of thing to really harness some of the natural energies of the earth that flow around us all the time that we can use and link to with focused intent to really bring well-being into our lives. Today I want to look at dowsing and follow up on a video I made a little while ago called Dowsing Explained, It's Not Mysterious. In that video, we looked at the ideomotor effect and actually why it can be applied to dowsing in a good way. Today, what I want to do is to just touch on a little bit of behavioral science that's been around since the 1990s. And it's all about this process that psychologists refer to as system one thinking and system two thinking. So what's that all about? Well, system one thinking is the intuitive side of thinking and decision making. System two is structured logical progression, building upon known experienced knowledge. Two very different ways of thinking, but as you would expect, they're both integrated most of the time. In the 1990s, an academic called Keith Stanovich introduced the terms and they became really, really popular for things like market research. And it was discovered that over 90% of our decisions were made subconsciously. So in other words, 90% of the decisions that we make, in, in excess of 90% in fact, are completely subconscious and we have no idea that we're making those decisions. But in 2011, Professor Daniel Kahneman wrote a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, and that really rocketed System 1 and System 2 thinking into the public's awareness. But how on earth does that apply to dowsing? Well, you might have guessed it already, of course. In his book, Daniel Kahneman made it very, very clear that these system one thinking and system two thinking are not actual specific ways that the brain independently functions. There are not aspects of the brain that are responsible for system one and system two. He used the idea of these different types of thinking almost as metaphor, if you like, to explain a concept. And of course, like everything, System 1 and System 2 do not operate independently, they intertwine all the time. If you think about how you have a conversation, you're intuitively preempting what the other person says, and also at the same time, you're using your logical mind to evaluate, perhaps if you're establishing an argument, what that argument is going to be, and progress it forward. So System 1 and System 2 are always interlinked. But the thing is, we can also use it to look at the way that we analyze life on a daily basis. So system one down here has a whole range of things that occur within that field, that, that range of intuition. And over here, the logical grounded objective viewpoint over here has a whole range. Don't forget, we're not digital beings, we're analog. So everything that we do goes in waves. And this is very much a wave from that through to that way of thinking. That is not to say that one is better than the other. What I'm trying to get at is the fundamental point that actually dowsing sits way over here on the intuitive thinking. It works in the subconscious. And it's only when the response has gone through the system to the hands, the muscles in the hands, the imperceptible ones, and we are aware suddenly that the rods are moving, that is the point that we establish conscious awareness. Otherwise, it's a subconscious process. That, to me, is how dowsing works. So, the point is, why do we sometimes feel like we're guessing when we're dowsing? I think it's really quite straightforward, actually, and that is that, of course, we've got dowsing sitting up this end of the scale, but right next to it is guessing. And guessing is really drawing upon our experience of life. It's what we already know. So it's our logical mind saying, well, if X, Y, Z happened in the past, the likelihood of another thing happening similar is X, Y, Z, right? So you're drawing upon past experience. Whereas with dowsing, of course, we're not. 
I remember dear old Hamish Miller, my mentor, saying that uh, to practice, practice, practice. And in the first instance, when you first start dousing, really you will always get odds on chance of guesstimates. So in other words, to start with, your dousing may well give you results that you could get just by guessing. But the more you practice, the more you have faith in it, the more you develop the dousing skill, then the more accurate your dousing results will be and the more um, surprises you will find as a result of it. And that's when dousing really does start to, to sort of get exciting. And you can then put it to practical applications, for example, like healing. Dousing is a training of the mind. And so it's not only important to practice dousing itself, but also to practice the focusing of the mind. And that's why we talk a lot about meditation on this channel. It's important to meditate because it really does help your brain waves go into the dowsing meditative healing mode. Anyway, there we go. So that's why I think that dowsing is very closely associated with guesswork, but it isn't the same thing. If this has been the sort of thing that you like, if you like dowsing, if you like this sort of uh, look, outlook on life, please click on subscribe, click on the grey bell icon to get notified every time we do a video upload, which usually these days is about twice a week. So until next time, take care. Bye bye.